So let's first talk about Common Core. And I know that this has become a little bit of an issue uh, in, in Georgia. And uh, let me first describe to you practical objections to Common Core that are not liberty-based. So these are problems with Common Core that don't stem from the threat of com that Common Core poses to liberty. So one, one problem uh, with Common Core is that there's no reason to believe that if a state improves its standards, somehow defined, that it will have better results. This has been analyzed by several uh, different studies. Um, most prominently, Tom Loveless has examined this. And uh, if you use something like the Fordham Institute's rating of state standards, or even changes in, uh, in state standards, and look at student achievement on something like the National Assessment of Educational Progress, there's no relationship, none. No relationship between the rigor of standards according to prominent rankings of those standards and how well students do. And there's even no relationship between those standards and how well students progress. Uh, and the change in their achievement on, on these tests are not uh, related in any way. And the correlations are really close to zero. Um, and why might that be? Um, it's not that. In principle, there's no relationship between what we expect students to learn and how well they should perform. It's just that the standards as a practical matter don't actually force anyone to do anything. You can think of standards as words uh, in a document. Right? They, they are these goals, often very vague goals, of what students are supposed to learn in a document but they don't make anyone do anything. Um, so you can change what the goals are that you write in a document, but school districts and schools and teachers in their classrooms can shut their door and do whatever they want. And the changing the standards doesn't change what happens in the classroom. And so, not surprisingly, it doesn't result in any change in achievement, and that's why there's no relationship. These are, are, are simply vague statements of the goals. Um, now, in principle, you could have a change in standards attached to a change in performance. But to do that would require changing lots of things. So you'd have to change the standards, but then you would have to change the assessments, the tests that are aligned with those standards. And then you'd have to attach consequences to the results of those tests to force school districts, schools, and teachers to change what they do. Okay? And that is ultimately the dream of standards-based reform. The dream of standards-based reform is that we'll not only change the words in the document, but we're going to attach it to assessments, which will be then change curriculum, which will then change pedagogy. Um, in the classroom, right? It'll change what is taught and how it is taught in the classroom. And the only way to do that is to attach consequences to individual teachers and schools to those vague words in the document, to the standards. Um, not surprisingly, this is extremely unlikely to happen. Um, uh, the probability that you will get uh, um, states uh, all over the nation to agree to uh, not only adopt the, the vague words, adopting the vague words was costless and had a, a benefit to it, to states. If, if they adopted Common Core, they had a chance at getting money from the federal government in the midst of a fiscal crisis, so they were tempted, and they were offered regulatory relief to No Child Left Behind uh, regulations that they felt they could not meet. And so the combination of regulatory relief and the prospect of getting money in the midst of a fiscal crisis lured many states into adopting Common Core standards, but adopting was an empty gesture, right? You, you just swear you're going to adopt these vague words in the document. But to have them be real, you have to have the system agree to adopt new assessments. Those new assessments have to be aligned with those standards, and they have to have real consequences for individual school district schools and teachers. This is not going to happen. It will fail. And the reason why it will fail 
is because the people who are in charge of it um, won't let it happen. Right? It's extremely unlikely that the people who are the most politically influential in the education system, the people involved in the education system, are going to squeeze a vice on themselves. Um, they, they're not likely to be relied on to do that, since it would make their own lives more unpleasant. And so, not surprisingly, the teacher unions were on board with Common Core when it was just a bunch of big words. But now that people are starting to talk about assessments, the uh, Randy Weingarten has come out and said, let's have a halt on any high stakes testing related to, com to, to the new Common Core standards. This is not surprising at all. It's all perfectly predictable. Right? It's, she was all for it when it was empty words in the document. When it's something that might actually impose consequences, she's against it. And by the way, she has a lot more power than most people involved in education. And they'll block it. They'll stop it in most states. They're very good at that. Um, but it's not just them. Everyone else is going to wake up to um, the reality that Common Core is going to drive a change in their school district or their school. And they, for of their own reasons will try to block it too. So all of the ambiguity that has maintained about what Common Core really requires, what it really means, whether it is more progressive education or more or, um, classical education, all of these ambiguities get resolved as it, as it actually gets implemented. And as those ambiguities get resolved, the people whose interests are hurt begin to discover who they are and oppose it and block it. So for all these reasons, it is inevitable that Common Core will fail. It will fail to actually change practice in classrooms, in classrooms all over the country. That, it will fail to do that. It may stay on the books and be the, the, the standards of, of various states, but it will be the same vague, empty words in the document as the standards before them. Um, because it's a political bridge too far to try to squeeze this whole system down to the classroom level through assessments and consequences. Everyone who, whose interests will be hurt will figure out who, who, who they are and they will oppose it. Now, of course, the inevitable only happens if everyone who's supposed, to, who's supposed to oppose it does what they're supposed to do. So the inevitable is contingent upon people acting on their interests, but I have confidence, uh, as uh, Milton Freeman did, that people will pursue their interests. That, that similarly, people who oppose Common Core will, will pursue their interests and block it. Um, so, actually, I, I skipped the, the second explanation here, which is that, so Common Core is a bad idea because first, there's no reason to believe that there's a connection between standards and achievement, and second, because um, it's almost certain to be a political failure. Um, but I should also say that a lot of the rhetoric that's used to support Common Core makes no practical sense either. So, for example, there are claims that it's good to have it be common uh, because it achieves economies of scale and improves information. So if everyone in the country were to have the same standards and the same assessments, the assessments would be cheaper because you could do it on scale rather than each state having to develop its own. You could do it nationally, it should be cheaper that way. Um, and it should improve information because people can um, share information, um, make everything comparable by having the same standards and the same assessments. Neither of these benefits will be realized. First, I think as George is beginning to discover, the new assessments will cost a lot more. Um, there is no such thing as economy of scale in education. There are actually pretty clear diseconomies of scale in most aspects of education. Um, and that's a whole other conversation for why that is. But um, but part of it is the political nature of the enterprise. It um, uh, makes it so that the costs actually are spiraling out of control. Um, so the, the new test is actually going to be a lot more expensive. And uh, information comparability, frankly, we already have information comparability from state to state, even though states have different tests. Because we have a national test called the NAEP, which provides us information as NAEP, National Assessment of Educational Progress, which allows us to know how every state is doing and make comparisons. And in fact, you can even use the NAEP to equate local school district tests from place to place and put them on the same scale already. And I've actually already done that in something called the Global Report Card, uh, which I did with the Bush Institute. If you look up Global Report Card, you could look up your school district and you can see how that district does relative to every other school district in the United States and relative to actually 25 countries uh, abroad.
Um, so th we already have information uh, to compare students from place to place in the country, and, and we're, we're seeing no economies of scale in the testing uh, or, or uh, uh, other issues related to Common Core. But more importantly are the liberty objections to Common Core, um, which is Common Core is not just bad because it's going to fail politically, it's bad because it's a threat to liberty. And it's a threat to liberty because implicit in it is a, a belief that there is a correct way for all students to learn. That there is, there is a set of knowledge that all students must possess, that Concord knows what that knowledge is, um, and if um, standards drive curriculum which drives pedagogy and drives everything that happens in the classroom, what we're talking about is imposing a remarkable amount of uniformity on all of our school children. And that's a threat to liberty because, as it turns out, we don't all agree on what it is that all of our children are supposed to learn or how they're supposed to learn it. And part of freedom is having the ability to disagree about these fundamental issues like what knowledge is essential and to disagree about what practices are most effective at communicating knowledge. Um, and Having that freedom to disagree and to, per, to pursue our, our different visions is the same kind of essential freedom we have in any other aspect of our life. The same kind of liberty we have about who to vote for, right? I mean, it, why isn't there just a correct answer for what the right policies are and, why, and, and who the politicians are that pursue those correct policies? Imposing uniformity in who we vote for would be as much of an infringement on liberty as imposing on all school children what it is that they're supposed to learn and how they're supposed to learn it. So there is an illiberal core to, to common core. Um, and, and so if it were to succeed somehow, it would be bad. Um, I take comfort from my confidence that it will fail, but it only fails if everyone does what they're supposed to do, so you all have to do what you're supposed to do. Um, so, um, but there are negative consequences to liberty even if Common Core fails, or even when Common Core fails, which is that it has changed the political scene around education by expanding the power of the federal government. And it's a one-way ratchet. So when the federal government's power expands, it does not easily go back. In fact, it almost never goes back. And so this whole Common Core experience has legitimized a larger role of the federal government in that education policy than before. Now, a lot of people could say, yes, No Child Left Behind was an expansion of federal responsibility, and in some ways it was. But this is more, and actually much more, if you think about it. What No Child Left Behind did, in essence, was require that everyone test and report results. That was what it did. Now, it said to every state, you decide what it is that you're testing, you decide how to teach it. All that require, we require is that you, that you decide what it is the kids should learn and test for it and tell us what the results are broken out by subgroup. It was an information provision requirement. Now that is an expanded role of the federal government and we can argue about whether that was good or bad, but it was in keeping with the role of the federal government since the Office of Education was founded in the, ninth, in the 1860s which was information provision. So the federal government has, for a century and a half, been involved in collecting information and reporting it about schools. Okay, so No Child Left Behind was mostly in keeping with that. But it was a much more extensive information collection. It's a bigger, a bigger thing. But Common Core goes way beyond that, because it doesn't just say that you have to collect information and tell us what it is, but it tells states, school districts, schools, and teachers what to teach and how to teach it. Now I know that people will say there's a difference between standards and curriculum and pedagogy, and of course there is. But for standards to mean anything, for it to not be worthless words in the document, it has to drive curriculum and pedagogy. That's the theory of how it works. 
So if it works, um, it's a big expansion of what the federal government does. And the federal government has gotten involved now in telling <coughs> states what their standards should be and how, so, and how they're supposed to teach and what they're supposed to teach. Now they haven't done it directly, they didn't order it by law, but they coerced it, they pushed it, they incentivized it. We can, we can quibble over which word you prefer, but they had a big hand in it. Um, the other thing that's really corrosive to liberty um, is that in Concord is that it provides license to local educators and administrators to um, alter education in a way that um, in which they're not accountable to democratically or, 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 to, or to parents. So um, uh, one of the controversies related to Common Core is that the English standards appear to increase emphasis on um, uh, informational text and a reduction uh, in emphasis on literature. Now, the authors of Common Core say, no, 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 you misunderstand. We're just talking about improving the quality of informational text outside of English class in social studies um, and science. Um, but it doesn't matter what the authors of Common Core say it means. What matters is that local school officials are making changes and they're saying Common Core is making us do it. Now, of course, it's really what they want to do. It's, they're doing it because they want to do it but they are not accountable for that decision because they're saying that they're acting on someone else's words. Okay. So in my uh, 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 school district, and I'm, sh I'm sure we have many other anecdotes of this, um, uh, ninth grade English has eliminated several books, works of literature, that they had been teaching for years. Um, they eliminated uh, Romeo and Juliet, Of Mice and Men, uh, The Odyssey, gone. They're all gone. From, they've been replaced with informational text, um, including a self-help book, uh, The Seven Secrets of Successful Students, or something like that. Um, and it's a horror, right? I mean, that's, uh, to me, that's not at all what I, what I want them to be doing. But I can't even get them to change, because they say, oh, it wasn't us. We didn't do it. Common Core did it. But who is this faceless thing, Common Core? Who, who do I elect to change that? Who do, I, who do I write to to change that? What we've done is we've removed accountability for what's taught in ninth grade English from my ninth grade English teacher. I mean, if my ninth grade English teacher might have made a bad decision, but at least I could talk to her um, and try to convince her. But now she says it wasn't me. Right? Or, the, or she points to the curriculum official in the school district, and the curriculum official says it wasn't me. Um, and this is a really dangerous move because it's, 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 it's removing meaningful accountability um, from, from schools uh, for the, the pedagogical and curriculum choices.